Can you charge your Tesla if you were completely off grid? So today I'm gonna to answer that question. I have my Tesla Model X Plaid. I drained it to 75% just to simulate a typical drive around town. We're going to disconnect our power walls from the grid and we're gonna to test to see if we can charge from 75 to 90. And we're gonna document the whole process. Okay, so we're going to go off grid. You have taken your home off grid. Powerwall is providing backup energy to your house and it gives us an estimation of time remaining and all that fun stuff. Now the solar did click off right away because our power walls are at 100%. Once the power wall drains a little bit, the solar will come back online. And if we go into settings and the vehicle charging, we can see that 90% of the power wall is saved for the home and 10% is for the vehicle. For the sake of this test, I'm going to do an e even 50-50 split just so it's a little bit more fair. But let's plug in the vehicle and see what happens. We're charging with the Tesla wall connector. So the Tesla wall connector is typically capable of 12 kilowatts of max charging speed. But since we're off grid, the Tesla power walls are going to intelligently monitor and control that. So depending on how much solar there is, depending how much energy our house is using, it's going to adjust all of that. We can go into the Tesla to see how that works. So we're in the Tesla and it says time remaining two hours and it's kind of fluctuating a little bit because you can see the charge rate. It's fluctuating. It's going between like six, zero. So our charge rate is going to dynamically change based on the sun, based on the usage of the house and everything like that. There's also a message that says vehicle charging with off grid power wall. Charging rate adjusted to allow power sharing. So the power walls are now under 100%. The solar should click back on any time now. So the solar is back on. We're getting 5.9 kilowatts. That should, in theory, allow our car to charge way faster. Um, we're at 6 kilowatts now. But I did check and my AC just kicked on, so that explains it. So the AC is running and the Tesla's charging. All off grid, like I find this very fascinating, very amazing that this is even possible. So we're at an hour and 50 minutes remaining. We have solar energy and our Tesla is charging at eight, nine kilowatts. Keep in mind 12 is completely maxed out if this wasn't on the off grid mode. Our solar is really pumping. Um, about 10 kilowatts is the highest I'll see. I'm pretty sure there's some clouds outside. And if you're not familiar with my setup, I have two Tesla power walls. Each power wall has 13.5 kilowatt hours of capacity. So 27 kilowatt hours total, the Model X Plaid has a battery that's 100 kilowatt hours. So basically us charging from 75% to 90 shouldn't be a big deal, even, even if the sun wasn't out. But if you had this car completely, you know, at zero, and you expected two power walls to charge it, that's not gonna happen. So you just have to be um, realistic with yourself. One Tesla power wall is 13.5 kilowatt hours. A Tesla maxes out at like 100 kilowatt hours. So just remember that the solar and the power walls definitely work together to charge your car. And I have 36 solar panels for a total of 11.3 kilowatts. So just a little checkup, we've been going good. Nothing really eventful to report. We still have good solar, but it's like cloudy out, so it's going up and down. Right now, our power walls are at 77%, so it's been slowly trending down because of course our home usage is more than our solar. So of course that's gonna happen. If we go to our Tesla, right now it's currently charging at 11 kilowatts, so that's good. We're almost maxed out and it says 45 minutes remaining. So that's putting us pretty close to our initial estimate. Everything's going great, it's been perfect. Like the fact that I've been inside with the air condition turning on and off, I've been on my computer using Wi-Fi, lights on, TV on, like you wouldn't even know that the grid's off. It's kind of crazy. If there was ever an event that led to our grid being off for like a week, we would be fine. Like I said earlier in the video, the Tesla has a 100 kilowatt hour battery. The power walls have 13.5 kilowatt hours a piece. You don't need to plug your Tesla in and charge it to full every day like we're doing right now. You could literally just 
do your errands, come back, not plug it in, and just let your house be completely, you know, cozy in the AC and stuff like that. The thing I want to point out though, having the Tesla and charging it is super helpful because if your power walls get to 100%, your solar cuts off and you're basically wasting energy. So in a situation like that, you might as well, you might as well just charge your Tesla, you know, because it's going to store your excess energy. Your Tesla kind of acts as a secondary power bank, even though it's not capable of discharging to your house, it can store all that excess energy. If we went back to this setting in the app and changed it to 5%, so only allow 5% of the power wall with the vehicle, that basically means it will just suck all the excess energy from the power walls and then you will get 95% to the house. So you could do that as well. So our car is completely charged up. Ignore the five kilowatts added during the last charging session because I accidentally unplugged it and plugged it back in. So 15 kilowatt hours of energy did go into the car. The only problem now is that our power walls are at 63% and it is 322 in the afternoon, but the sun doesn't set until later anyway. So the final challenge will be, can we get the power walls back to 100%? Because if this was a true off grid scenario, we would want the power walls to be at 100% because we need them to be able to last through the night basically running the AC to keep us comfortable in the middle of summer in Florida. If I would have checked the forecast, I would have seen that it is kind of like cloudy outside. So if it was a real world situation, I probably wouldn't have charged today. But also keep in mind as well, we did in fact, you know, purposely set the vehicle charging went off, went off grid for 50-50. So I'm gonna change it back to this to be honest 90 percent for home use 10 percent with vehicle so what would have happened in this test if we did that it wouldn't have charged as fast and it probably wouldn't have charged all the way and it may have taken several days you know to completely charge so i'm going to update you one more time we're going to see if my power walls get up to 100 percent that will be the final test we still have some good solar energy right now going into the power walls. I'll be back. Okay, so it's like six o'clock. Our power walls ended at the peak at like 78%. So what we learned here, if you wanna charge your Tesla and you're completely off grid, set your limits so your power wall don't get too low. That way you have enough energy to last you through the night. 80% should get me through the night, but we are getting into like the hottest part of the summer. So the AC is going to run pretty frequently. If it was like winter time in Florida, the AC doesn't come on and we don't use the heat. So I would have survived no problem. Worst case scenario, maybe the power walls would have been, been completely depleted in the middle of the night. Um, maybe around like, I don't know, two, three, four in the morning or something but then we would have just had to go a few more hours to wait for the sun to come up to kick the AC back on. So it's doable either way. Um, the whole point is that you could charge from solar panels if you have no grid power. That's truly amazing. This is the world's quickest SUV and it's powered by the sun. I just find that amazing. If you enjoyed this video, I'll put two more for you to watch right there. Make sure you like and subscribe. Bye.